Hey, Walter Sorrells back with another Knife Makers Friday Five. Today, so, you want to become a custom knife maker. All right, welcome back to another Knife Makers Friday Five. These are just kind of intermittent shows that I do kind of to keep you up with some of the, you know, things that are going on with the channel and with my knife making business, uh, as well as answering some viewer mail or just talking about something that's on my mind. So today I'm basically going to be talking about you know, how you kind of get started in custom knife making. Not so much the practical stuff as just like uh, mindset kind of things. All right, before we do that though, let me catch you up with a few things, uh, you know, as far as my knife making business goes. Uh, the first is, this year is actually a first for me. I'm gonna have a table at the Blade Show for the first time. I've come to, as far as I can recall, every single Blade Show for the last 20, 25 years, but never once had a table. The reason for that is that I just never have any inventory. Most of my business for you know, 20 years has been doing custom orders. And so I just have never had a whole bunch of time to get, you know, a big table full of knives done. This year, I'm promising I'm gonna do it. So if you are uh, interested in picking up a knife from me, by all means, come by the table. And if not, uh, you know, just come by and say hi. So second thing, and I'm actually really excited about this, uh, I'm gonna be working on a mini course. I won't go into too much de detail about it. The basic idea though is how to make a knife from a file. I bought this big pile of El Cheapo, well, I shouldn't say El Cheapo files, they're just used files. And getting started in knife making can cost a lot of money. So I've been, I've been trying to think in, you know, in the past few months about ways for you to get started that are not gonna cost you an arm and a leg. And files are one of the great ways to do that. I'm actually gonna do a video for uh, Pops probably next week where I show the making of a knife with a file. But I'm gonna do a whole mini course, um, probably be several months before it comes out, uh, that really just dives deep into this. The whole idea of which is how can you get started making quality knives without spending much money? Of course, before going any further, uh, I always have to mention, if you're liking what we're doing here on the channel and you wanna help out, Patreon is a great way to do that. Uh, Patreon.com slash Walter Sorrels. You know, I've been doing this really almost since YouTube started. All this gear, you know, fancy camera equipment and stuff like that, that I have to buy in order to make these things cost money, and the more you guys can help out, uh, the better the videos that I can make. Okay, so let me get into the kind of the heart of the matter here, which is getting started in knife making. So I know I've done some videos that touch on this subject before. I've done close to 500 videos over the years now, and so every now and then I kind of repeat myself. I don't think I've completely devoted a Friday Five to this in the past, but if I have, my apologies. Okay, so the first thing that I would say when you get started in any hobby is don't set your expectations too high. I don't mean in the grand scheme of things. It's great to be ambitious. It's great to want to do great work. It's great to have high standards. But that's different from having high expectations. And what I mean by that is if your expectations are that you're going to be a, you know, a master craftsman and making a living, uh, selling handmade knives in a year or something, it ain't gonna happen. You know, you can't become a professional concert pianist in a year. Uh, you can't pick up a baseball and be in the MLB throwing, you know, nasty curveballs in a year. It's just, this is, this is a business just like most businesses, frankly, that takes a little while. And so that's part of the fun of it, really is if you moderate your expectations, but you keep high standards, you know, what will happen is that you constantly improve. You constantly find something new to learn. You constantly are looking around like, how can I learn to do that better? How can I, you know, how can I start doing this kind of work that I've never uh, worked on before? 
And you sort of start adding all these things up, and suddenly you look around and you're like, oh my goodness, I've learned a ton of stuff, but it's not going to happen overnight. Okay, second point, and this kind of gets back to this thing that I've really been, like I said, I've been thinking about this for the past, you know, several months. It's something that I'm really interested in, and I want to do, you know, more videos about this. Don't worry that you're going to have to spend a whole big ton of money to get started in knife making. It's true that if you go out and you get all the fanciest equipment, you can spend literally tens of thousands of dollars very quickly. But you do not have to do that. So, um, you know, this, and this kind of goes along with moderating your expectations, but you learn a lot by making a knife from a file. You learn a lot by making a, a, a knife with a file. I've made a lot of mistakes, but one of the things that I feel kind of proud about when I first got started was that I made a bunch of knives just by filing them out, just filing and filing until I was done. And uh, in fact, the very first, I think it was the very first knife that I did, but I filed out a little bitty knife and then I decided, okay, I'm ready to make a katana now. And I filed out this, you know, enormous katana. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I didn't know anything about Japanese swords other than using them, because I did have a martial arts background, but I didn't know anything about metallurgy or really anything at all. And so uh, I tried to make a katana with a file. And I actually, to my credit, I actually got the whole thing shaped. Now, was it a functional katana? Was there anything good about it beyond the fact that I shaped it with a file? No, absolutely not. But when you go through that process of shaping something with a file, you really learn a lot about the geometry of knives. And, uh, you know, this little file right here I bought off the you know, off eBay for essentially nothing. But honestly, that's, you know, that's really only one piece of the pie. The more important part is that if you have a drill of some sort, and, you know, like a decent electric drill is, is fine, but you can literally get an old-fashioned brace and bit from a swap meet or something, and you can drill holes with that. A file, some sandpaper, you know, a couple of saws, and a hammer. That is really all you need to get started making knives. It's amazing, but I mean, go back in time and, uh, you know, the people who were making katanas 700 years ago, or um, your swords in Europe, or swords in, uh, in the Middle East, or whatever, I mean, these guys didn't have belt grinders, they didn't have power hammers, they didn't have, you know, all this stuff that we have today, and yet they made these incredible uh, you know, knives and swords and things that exist to this day and are still beautiful and we still look at them and say, that's an amazing piece of work. And, it, and they did it all by hand with no machines. So it can be done and, and don't, you know, don't let that get in your way. Okay, now let me just turn to something that's just straight psychological. So if you turn on the news these days, you can't go about 10 minutes without somebody telling you how there's all this contagion on social media and that people are watching social media and you know, being influenced to do stupid things basically because they're paying attention to some knucklehead in their basement who's telling you that such and such is super important. And Anyway, the same kind of thing can happen with knife making. There's so many talented knife makers today. We've got Forged in Fire, we've got various other TV shows, and then endless things like I do on YouTube. And you know, a lot of the guys that do stuff on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and all this stuff do really, really nice work. And it's easy to, you know, come out of the gate thinking, well, I'm never gonna make a knife like Kyle Royer, you know, and that's fine. You know, everybody doesn't need to make knives like Kyle Royer. Everybody doesn't need to make katanas like I make or whatever. I'm looking around trying to find some simple little knife, but well, you know, I made this knife right here. Uh, there's nothing fancy about it. Um, I'm proud of making it. 
It's a you know, complicated and interesting thing to make, but it's not fancy or showy or whatever. My point being, don't let yourself get too carried away or intimidated or spooked or um, you know, whatever by all the guys out there who are doing super cool stuff. You just have to put one foot after another and try and find little triumphs each day. I used to not be able to do this particular thing on a belt grinder, but now I've, you know, I've got my skill up to a level where I can do that one thing or do that better. It doesn't matter, but just, you know, improvement always happens by increments. You never make giant leaps in one moment. It's always this and this and this and this and this and this. Little things that add up to big things. So, uh, you know, to sum that up, I, I really, I can't stress enough how important it is to come in um, not with an excessive sense of humility, but enough humility to understand that like, oh, you know, everybody went down this road before. Everybody had to go through a process to learn how to do this stuff, and everybody failed a lot of times. Everybody did some knife that embarrassed them sometime, uh, and that's okay you're gonna fail your way to success too. Okay, so this is a little bit more of a practical thing, but it's pretty important as far as I'm concerned, and that is don't make the mistake that I made right out of the gate, which is trying to make a katana right off the bat. Make simple little knives. The little is actually an important part of it. It takes twice, three, four times as much time to make a chef's knife as it does to make a hunting knife, and it takes twice as long to make a hunting knife as it does to make a little bitty utility knife that you might be using you know, in your shop. But you learn more, or you, you learn almost as much, let's put it that way, you learn almost as much making that little utility knife as you do making the chef's knife, but it takes you know, an eighth as much time. So when you start out, try to make simple knives don't try to make Excalibur, don't try to make a Katana. Simple stuff, you know, just little knives for, let me see if I have one here. Well, here's some cool things. So this is a little utility knife that I made. I, you know, I just kind of basically copped the design off of something I saw, you know, in some catalog or something. This is a little Japanese marking knife. You know, these are very simple knives to make. Um, but you have to heat treat them, you have to put a handle on them, you have to grind them, you have to make them sharp, you know? So all the things that you need in order to make a katana, in order to make a hand and a half sword, in order to make a, you know, D-guard bowie, you pretty much have to do in these two, but it takes you far, far less time. All right, well, I'm gonna kind of wrap it up there. Uh, by the way, you know, I have this uh, PDF that I've been giving away um, that kind of summarizes some of my thoughts about just getting started in knife making. Um, down in the description, up in the cards, you can um, find information about how to get that. I'll send that to you for free. It doesn't tell you everything I've ever thought about, you know, getting started in knife making, but it's, you know, some good little tips for you know, if you're just thinking about making knives and you're sort of like, oh gosh, do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? Um, this'll this'll kind of help you out a little bit with that. Let me just wrap up by saying that, you know, the most important thing when you're starting any, any hobby is to make that first step. And the first step doesn't have to be buying a belt grinder for $4,000. It doesn't have to be buying a hydraulic forge press. It doesn't have to be uh, buying a forge and an anvil. You can find reasonably priced forges and anvils if you look for a while, but you can also get started with a file, uh, you know, a little $59 um, one by 30 belt grinder from Harbor Freight. You, you don't have to do the whole thing in one throw. So if you, wanted, if you wanna get started in knife making, really just dip your toe in it. Don't have superhuman expectations. Just get started with something simple. Try to take it from you know, beginning to end, make a knife that works, learn something from it, and then the next one that you make is gonna be better. Uh, and the main thing, this is absolutely the most important thing, and I actually think about this even after almost 25 years of doing this. I try and show up and have fun, and some days, 
you know, this is hard work. Uh, you stand in front of a belt grinder all day, and your knees hurt, and your back hurts, and everything, and you feel like, oh boy, I could find a better way of making a living. But most days, you know, I'm able to find something that's really pretty fun and really interesting to me. So I would encourage you to approach knife making that way if you're trying to get started with it. You know, so basically, just put one foot in front of the other, have fun with it, and don't worry about the long term. Are, are you going to make a living out of this or what? That doesn't matter. Just have fun with it. And whatever's going to happen next is what was meant to happen next. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And we'll see you soon. Like I said, hopefully next week I should have a making a knife from a file video uh, that's going to be this month's uh, Pops Project of the Month. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. Walter Sorrell's Blades dot com.